Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem target sum. We're given an array of integers called nums and we're also given a single integer called target. And basically for every single number in the array nums, we can either choose to add that number or subtract that number. And we must do that for every single number. We have to either choose to add it or subtract it. And then using that, we will have some uh, total or some sum at the end of our, uh, you know, computation. And basically we want to know, does that computation, that sum that we have, that total, is it equal to the target value that we were given at the beginning, right? And not only that, but we want to count the number of ways that we can get a sum from this array nums that will equal this target value. And then we want to return how many ways we were able to do that. So in this example, you can see we're given an array nums of five consecutive ones and a target value of three. And you can see all the different ways that we can sum up to that total value of three. There are five different ways to do that, right? You can see the first one, if we subtract the first one, add the next one, add the next one, add the next one, and add the next one, we're able to get to three, right? Basically four positive and one negative, that will give us a sum of three. You can see that the next example, the next way that we were able to do that, basically we subtracted the second one, added the first, and then added the next three. The main thing though to note is that the order that you do these does matter. So if we can change the order of the plus and minus symbols, you know, that counts as a different way that we were able to t total up to the target, right? So basically we're, tr we're counting permutations. So this can be a complex problem if you're not familiar with it. So let's start off with the brute force solution, which is gonna be two to the power of N, and then let's see how we can actually optimize that into a more efficient solution. So suppose we're given that same example that we just talked about, target of three and five ones in the input. Remember, for every single one of the values, we have a choice, right? We can either add it or subtract it, right? And the best way to visualize this for me is always using a decision tree, right? So if we want to know all possible ways we could, you know, enumerate this and all possible totals we could get from this array, a decision tree is the most helpful. Initially, we start at the index, right? We're keeping track of what index we're at, right? Initially, we're gonna be at the zeroth index. We're gonna keep moving on and on as we make choices, right? To the second, third, fourth index until we, of course, reach the end of the array. Another thing we're gonna be keeping track of, what is our total so far, right? Of course, we wanna know what our total is so far because by the time we reach the end of the array, we wanna know is our total equal to the target value or not. So using this pair of values as our parameter to our recursive function, we'll get a decision tree that looks something like this. Initially, we'll be at zero, zero, right? Index zero, and our total will initially be set to zero. We can make a choice, right? We're at this one over here, right, at the top left. We can either make a choice to add that one, right, plus one or minus one. If we add the one, then our index is gonna be at one because we're gonna to move to the next position, right? We're gonna be at this position now, which is at index one. And our total, right, the second value we're keeping track of is also gonna be one because we added a one. Now, if we did the opposite choice, we would still end up at index one, but our total would be negative one, right? That's our second value over here. And this decision tree is actually gonna be pretty simple for us because all of the values in the input are one. So basically every single decision is gonna look exactly like this one. Let me just kind of quickly draw it out to give you an idea. Okay, so we kind of ran out of room, so I won't draw out the entire tree, but just to show you a path, a single path that will lead us to the target. So initially we start at the, the first spot, right? We add the first one, right? So this is a positive right, we're at one so far, then we go down this path where we we minus one, right, then our total is at zero, so minus one, then we add one again, we're at index three, total of one, so plus one here, then we add another one, we're at index four, total of two, and then we add a last one, right, the fifth one, we add this as well, that leaves our total exactly at three, which is good, and it puts us at index five. Well, 
index zero is here, one here, two here, three, four, five is exactly out of bounds. So as soon as we go out of bounds, we're done, right? We've reached our base case. Now we wanna know is our total so far, which right now happens to be three, is it equal to the target? Yes, it's exactly equal to the target. So now we're done. We found a single way that we could reach the target value, right? Of course, there's gonna be other, uh, dis there are other paths in our decision tree that also lead to the result. But there's also going to be some paths that maybe sum up to, you know, possibly one, right? If we subtract two of them and then add three of them, that'll leave us with a positive one, which is not equal to our target. So in that case, we won't count that. But ultimately, we're going to count how many different paths were able to lead us to that target value. Now, this is the brute force. Of course, this tree could have a height of n, and we obviously have two branches each time, uh, right? Two different paths for every single node. So that will put the time complexity at two to the power of n. How can we optimize this? Well, the trick is going to be in the parameters that we're passing into our recursive function, right? The index, which we're maintaining, and the total sum that we have as well. Using these, we can actually optimize this solution. So we can use the idea of caching to optimize this problem as with most dynamic programming problems. So take a look at the parameters we have, the index, which we're passing in, and the total. Now, how many possible values could we pass in for the index value? Of course, uh, you know, the size of nums, right? So that's how many, n is how many uh, possibilities we could have for this index. How many different possible values could we pass in for the total? That's definitely a little bit harder to determine. And the simple solution to that is what's the the maximum total that we could have from this array of nums? In this case, just add up all the nums, it's five, right? Five is the biggest number we could pass in for total. And since five is the biggest number, we could possibly also, you know, if we subtract every value, we could get, you know, pass in a negative five here, right? And potentially every value in between positive five and negative five. Not necessarily though, but possibly that's the big idea here, right? Since we're going for worst case time complexity, which is big O time complexity, we have to think about the worst case and possibly we could pass in every value between positive five and negative five. So overall, uh, the, the way to th think about how many different values we could pass in for the total is basically the total sum of the nums array, right? And let's just call that T for simplicity. So T, uh, N times T, where T is the total number of values we could pass in, or rather the sum of the entire array, that's gonna be the overall time complexity if we perform caching using this pair of values. So it's pretty easy to implement caching once you have coded up the recursive solution. So we can now jump into the code. Okay, so now let's write the code. It's actually not too bad. So remember, we are gonna be using a cache. I'm gonna call that DP. It's just gonna be a hash map in this case. And we're gonna be mapping a pair of values, which is the index and the total so far. We're gonna be mapping this pair of values to the number of ways that we can actually get to the target value if we start at this index with this particular total value. Now we can actually write out our recursive function. I'm just gonna call it backtracking and I'm gonna define it in uh, this uh, function. Let's just call it backtrack. I'm gonna define it nested inside of this outer function so that we don't have to pass in every parameter like dp, like nums and target into this function. We only have to pass in index and the current total so far. Not too bad. Now, remember, uh, I always like to start out with our base case. What's our base case? Is it, It's if we reach the end of the array. So if i is equal to length of nums, let me remain, uh, rename index to i just to keep things a little bit shorter. So if we've reached the end of the array, then what are we gonna do? Well, we wanna return one if our total is equal to the target value, right? If this is true, then we can return one. If it's not true, then we have to return zero, meaning that this is not a way to reach the target value. So in Python, it's pretty easy to do that, but you can use a ternary operator in your language of choice. 
And the other base case is going to be if we've already seen this before, we've already seen this pair of index total before, then that means it must exist in our cache because that's what we're going to be doing as we compute these, we're going to be caching them. So if it exists in our cache, well, which we can check like this, if, if it's in DP, then we can just return DP at index I and this total value. If either of those base cases does not evaluate to true, then we get to the fun part, the recursive part, which is actually going to be pretty easy because we don't need any loops or anything like that. We can just, you know, determine the answer for this uh, pair of values, this index total. And how are we going to do that? We're going to, of course, call our recursive function backtrack. And remember, we really had two choices that we could make. Uh, one choice was to add the value at index i, right? If we do that, then the the next index we're going to be passing is just going to be i plus 1, right? We're going to be doing that no matter what, regardless of whether we add or subtract the value. But this for the second parameter, for the total parameter, we're going to pass in the current total plus nums of i. That's if we're adding this. Now we could do the exact same thing if we're subtracting it. So let's do that on the next line. I'm going to do a plus sign because then when we go to the next line, we want to put the opposite. Instead of adding this, we're going to be subtracting nums of i. The index though stays the same, i plus 1. So if we take these two function calls, add the results together, that will tell us how many possible ways starting at index i and with this total that we could sum up to the target value, right? If we add these together, then we can store them in our cache and then we can just return the result. Turn dp of index i and total. So then we're good to go. We have uh, completed our recursive function. It really is that simple. You just have to worry about the base cases and the recursive case, which in our case was simple. It's just two decisions pretty simple. Then we of course have to remember to actually call our backtracking function. I always forget that. So we're going to start at index equals zero and our total initially is also going to be zero. Uh, then we can return the result of this function in our outer function and then we're done, right? This is the answer they were looking for. We returned it. Let's run it to make sure that the code works. And as you can see on the left, yes, it does work and it's pretty efficient. So I really hope that this was helpful. If it was, please like and subscribe. It supports the channel a lot. Consider checking out my Patreon where you can further support the channel if you'd like. And hopefully I'll see you pretty soon. Thanks for watching.